Here's a message from my sponsor. This thing was one of the best selling cars that <laughs> sake with my hair. This is a paid promotion by Keeps. Keeps is a male hair product that keeps, uh, well, keeps your hair in place. Uh, keeps it from leaving, keeps it from uh, vacating the space. It is possible that hair loss may be easier to prevent thanks to Keeps. Keeps is one of the only brands that offers generic versions of the only FDA approved active ingredients in hair loss products. The nice thing about Keeps is you can sign up on their website discreetly and actually speak to a licensed doctor who will prescribe you the product. And they'll ship it straight to you. Keeps. Hair today, hair tomorrow. So if you want hair like mine, or at least hope for hair like mine, I'd say go to keeps.com auto and you can get your first month free on me. Yeah, so I don't think uh, Starsky ever drove the car with one finger, but this car is so easy to drive. This power steering system is the best I've ever seen. And so just to piss off everybody that's ever driven a car, I'm going to drive this car with one finger the entire time because it is that easy. I bet you you can do burnouts, slides, J-turns with one finger with this car. I've never driven a muscle car that can be driven like this. <laughs> My name is Steve Bordy. We're gonna be talking about a 1976 Gran Torino screen used, one of three existing cars left. Well, I have three right now. One screen used TV show car. I have one limited edition that Ford put out in 76. And I have one replica. You know, just GM cars I like. I would love to have a 67 GTO, but it seems like every time I get a couple dollars saved up to maybe look at one, another Torino comes along. about 16, when, right before I was ready to drive. My first car was a Mustang, 64 Mustang. Um, my second car was a Torino. My third car was a Torino. My fourth car was a Torino. And I've had probably about 40 Grand Torinos. In 1975, when the pilot came out for Starsky and Hutch, the car, something hit me back then with, with that car, and, and it's never been the same since. I've driven Dodges, Chargers, Challengers, lots of different types of muscle cars, and not a single one of those cars has ever driven this nicely. And I'm kind of a Ford guy, I like Fords, I got a Mustang, and so I'm, it, it does me a little bit of pride to be able to drive a Ford Gran Torino that, that is one of the best driving muscle cars I've ever been in. And no, I'm not gonna drive like that the entire time, I'm gonna actually hold the wheel, because how embarrassing would it be if my entire video looked like this? <laughs> And all the stills that Autoblog and everybody else pulled was me driving like a fruitcake. This is in fact the original TV car. This is not from the movie. It's not a replica. It is the TV car that was used in the original TV show. Oh, what an example of a movie car. Just watching well, the pilot in 75, and then it became a series in 76, and uh, it was just every week when it came on, I was at my girlfriend's house at the time, and just we just watched that. That's where we sat and watched Starsky and Hutch every week. And of course, her family, our brothers and cousins and all, were Chevy people, so they would make fun of me owning a Ford, you know, and had all the jokes about it, but they come to all my car shows now, so. It got me interested in law enforcement. I always wanted to be law enforcement. 
And eventually I did. I became an animal cruelty investigator working for the police department. Uh, it just didn't work out to me to become a police officer. So it was close enough. My son became a police officer. My brother's a police officer. His son is a police officer. And uh, there's a lot of police in our family. So I started something. I'm learning more and more that a lot of law enforcement professionals, whether it's Secret Service or Animal Control or just Police Department, a lot of people love and have one of these cars. Many replicas, screen use. This is an icon in the law enforcement community, and I understand why. It's not the typical Crown Victoria cruise around and bust a couple speeders car. It is a character car. It's a car that has character, that speaks of the characters from the TV show. So I seen two cops actually literally in tears. They could not believe they were sitting in the actual car from the TV series and they said they became cops because of Starsky and Hutch. And he's got everything in here. He's even got uh, the uh, red light. So. Uh, we don't have that on the roof because that's illegal and we're in a police department parking lot right now so you don't want to just go and just drive away because then we'll have uh, the best car chase I've ever shot. I still have one of the original little cars, the little die-cast car from when I was 17. I still have that car. I still have the original poster that was hanging in my parents' garage. You know, I started finding things at yard sales and all, and then once I found out about eBay, I just went nuts. I would think that I have probably the largest collection in the world of Starsky and Hutch memorabilia. <laughs> this is 1976 Grand Torino and the fuel crisis had started and so when you're giving it a lot of gas this light turns on that says low fuel economy um, because Gas prices were high and everyone was trying to get the most efficient car, so to save money, you got a little light that says low fuel economy, to me, means you're doing it right. Well, it was hard to find these cars unless I wanted to make a replica. A guy I know by the name of Doug Stevenson bought two of the th three that we know of that are left. He um, told me he had it and I called him up, I says, you know, there's no no way that you can keep two of them and restore two of them. Why don't you sell me one? You know I'm looking for one. And he says, no, nah, I'm going to hold on to them for a while. He actually held on to them for like 10 years. Did nothing to them. And he said, if I ever go to sell them, you will be the first person that I call. And 10 years later, hey, Steve, it's Doug. He says, you're my first call like I always promised you. And he, and he was a man of his word. He called me. And he says, I'm selling them both. I'd like you to have them because everybody knew about my Starsky and Hutch collectibles that I have. And so he knew that I was a big collector and a big fan. So I called my buddy George. I said, listen, we're, we're taking a road trip to Ohio tomorrow. Could not swing buying both of them, but I did buy the one. Mine needed a couple of good years of work on it because it's hard to find parts. It was a frame off restoration. You know, the frame was sandblasted down, everything was built right back up again. Left rear quarter panel was so banged up and filled with mud, putty. So we cut that quarter panel off and they both came with bench seats. My car ended up being what they call the stunt car. So they put in extra big gears in the rear, did a little bit of work to it just to make it a um, little quicker, a little bit more traction, something they can burn the tires up with and Hutch would always slide into Starsky during some of the spins and turns. So he'd complain to the directors that, can we put bucket seats in here? At least I don't slide across. So the bucket seat car came alive. So the interior was left alone. Aside from the ground up restoration this car got mechanically, the interior was not touched. And the reason why that was, the reason why he left the interior alone is because this is where 
the job was done. This is where the actors sat. Well, when I had the motor rebuilt, of course it was built better than with factory. A little bit more juiced up. I didn't want, I, I, didn't, I don't want it to be a race car. It does sound very good. In fact, Paul Michael Glazier and David Soule just drove that car, and while they were driving it, I was in the back seat, which was a huge thrill of my life. And Paul actually said to David, he said, boy, I wish the car was this fast on the set. I could have wrecked it more. Sometimes when you drive an old car, it doesn't give you a lot of confidence that it's gonna stay on the road. I've had that in a few Dodges. But this car feels like you could pretty much do anything with it. And this was a stunt car, so that makes a lot of sense. Oh, yeah. There's a sort of a role reversal. Starsky would usually drive the car, but I'm driving the car. I'm blonde. Steven's dark hair, kind of Italian looking. Well, he is Italian, but... Um, he should be driving, but in fact, uh, let's say Hutch is driving right now. Well, the movie is what it is. It's not, it's not I don't think, anywhere close to the TV show. I saw it probably 20 times. Do I own the videos? Yes. I liked it because it was Starsky and Hutch, and I liked the car. I loved the cars. I supplied Hollywood with three of the cars for the movie. So uh, I got a chance to go out on the set. I met Owen Wilson, Ben Stiller, watched how the whole process went down. And um, so it was fun. When they called to buy that car when the movie came out, from that day on, it opened up so many doors. <laughs> the low fuel economy light even turns on when you're sitting in idle and you rev it. This is very much, I don't want to say a victim, but let's say it's a product of the fuel econ of the fuel crisis in the 1970s. It's a great design from from a time when when cars were kind of on a decline in their designs. Chevy and Ford um, with their Mustang and Dodge all kind of started going downhill in the in the mid 70s. And so what they did with the Gran Torino is is perfect. They it was it was perfect for the era, perfect for the time, and it kind of combated that idea of fuel economy is more important than fun. I just like the lines of it. I like the way it drives. I'm not a small car person. You know, I'm a bigger guy, so I need something that I can fit into and it's comfortable. And, and they ride nice. So I have one um, that's not a Starsky and Hutch car, and it's a 74 Gran Torino Brome. It rides like a dream. It's just a, an old guy car with the opera windows in it, but it's all original. 70,000 miles on it and it just and I'm keeping it just that way but I for, I have a weakness for the 74 to 76 if I had enough money to buy a 72 every time that happens I'll stumble across another 74 to 6 and I have to buy that one. Oh yeah because I I make them mechanically completely sound uh, I put a lot of money into them um, I detail them all out I don't paint them up like Starsky and Hutch because I've sold cars out of the country that the guys just loved just the way they are. You know, like a blue Gran Torino or something that went to England, a red one went to Dubai. I've had him go to uh, Japan. I've had him go to England. Uh, so one guy bought two or three from me from Italy. So the, I've, I've had him go all over the United States and all over other countries. And when I, when I sell a Torino to somebody and I see their eyes light up when they see it, it's the same way I get and we joke around um, that I says, I, I, now I know where it's coming from. I, I, I can see that you have the same passion with the car that I do. My wife doesn't understand that and the buyer's wife never understands it either. So we're in this club of people that that car affected. I mean, when I go out in my garage and I see it sitting there, I still can't believe that I have the actual car from the series, not just a replica not a limited, the actual car. And I, how, how did I work that out? I don't know. I've met so many really nice people throughout the world uh, on some of the Torinos that I've bought and sold 
just as a hobby because I like buying them. I like the thrill of buying them and fixing them up. And I like the thrill of selling because I can see the love that these people have for the car the same way I do. And I've had so many people come here to my house that's even spent the weekend here. And I've met so many really beautiful people because of the Gran Torinos. Oh, it's, it's, I can't believe how it all fell into place. And then on top of that, to meet Paul, Michael Glazier, and David Soule, and Antonio Fargus, uh, I mean, dreams can, do come true. Cool. So be sure to like, share, subscribe, and most of all, share it, because uh, I want more people to see these videos. So um, up next, I have no idea, because I haven't edited it yet. So. Thanks for watching.